Vatican City is the smallest state in the world in terms of size and population, but it is still incredibly well known, very influential, and very powerful because of the Pope and the Catholic Church. It's an incredibly wealthy state that possesses billions of dollars because of donations and tourism. Regardless of all of this, the Vatican is still a very secretive place that hides thousands of documents, artifacts, and more from the general public. But through speculation, conspiracies, and the occasional leak, we have been given enough information to know about some of these secrets. So that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So here are five dark secrets the Vatican keep from you. The Vatican Secret Archives is a vast underground space that contains over 50 miles of shelving that has documents pertaining to the church, the pope, and everything you can imagine involving Catholicism. Obviously, with a name like Secret Archives, you would assume that this area was well protected and that nobody outside of the church could enter it. But this hasn't been the case since the late 19th century when Pope Leo XIII opened the archives to researchers around the world. These archives have been around since the early 1600s, so it's entirely possible that the Vatican removed certain pieces of documentation before opening it to researchers. Also, certain parts of the Vatican secret archives actually do remain a secret. Anything dating past 1939 cannot be viewed by the public, and there are other documents that are even older than this that cannot be seen by anyone. The Vatican have always been selective for what they share to the public. So it's hard to imagine that they didn't get rid of the documentation that was controversial and would have shed a bad light on the church. Certain conspiracy theorists have speculated what the church are hiding from the public, and these range from information about Jesus to information about the strange death of John Paul I. It's hard to imagine what the Vatican are hiding from the public and what documents they don't want you to see, but they are definitely down there. We saw a glimpse of this in 2012 when a number of documents were leaked to the public that contained compromising information about the church, including proof of corruption, blackmail, and more. This was simply one leak, and it revealed a lot about the Vatican and their dealings, so it's hard to imagine how much would have been exposed about the church if one day everything was released. Obviously, it's hard to say for sure, but it would almost definitely be a lot more than what people thought. At the end of World War II, thousands of Nazi soldiers were attempting to flee Europe and evade capture. To do this, many of the soldiers used ratlines, which were a system of escape routes that led to Latin American countries where the soldiers would be safe. These ratlines were apparently supported by members of the Catholic Church, mainly by an Austrian bishop named Alois Hudal, who was a Nazi sympathizer who had praised Adolf Hitler a number of times in the past. The Catholic Church gave Hudal permission to visit a number of captured Nazi soldiers, but instead of a simple visit, Hudal used this time to help them escape using ratline systems that he created. Only a few years prior, Hudal was a very influential member of the Austrian Catholic Church who was also in and out of the Vatican on a consistent basis. He used this power to obtain travel documents from the Vatican Refugee Organization and even went as far as to give some of these Nazi soldiers actual Vatican State passports so that they could disguise themselves as priests. One of the men that Hudal set free was a man named Franz Stangl, a former police officer from Austria who became an SS commander. During his time as commander, he oversaw the execution of almost one million people, most of whom were Jewish. He was supposed to be tried for this immediately, but because Hudal helped him escape, he was on the run for another 20 years and wasn't arrested until 1967. He died in prison six months later, meaning that because of Hudal, Stangl only spent half a year in prison for his crimes. The Vatican forced Hudal to resign in 1952, but apart from that, they didn't really punish him at all. They have also refused to comment on this situation multiple times but documents have been pulled together that suggest they may have been involved with this situation specifically and that they were almost definitely involved in helping certain Nazi soldiers escape at some stage. The Vatican have stayed very quiet about their strange and confusing relationship with Nazi Germany during and before World War II, but it's easy to tell that it was a lot more substantial than they make it out to be. And it's a known fact that many Nazi sympathizers like Hudal were members of the Vatican and had a lot of influence, so it's not surprising that they used that influence to assist them. On the 28th of September 1978, Pope John Paul I died of a heart attack after only 33 days as the head of the Catholic Church. 
His reign was one of the shortest in history, and the church claimed that his death was probably due to a heart attack he suffered on the night he died. However, no autopsy was ever performed, and this, along with a few other factors, led to a number of conspiracies revolving around his death. One of the most popular ones is that it was an inside job conducted by the Vatican Bank and the Mafia. The Vatican Bank have consistently been scrutinized for corruption, money laundering, and ties to criminal organizations. A British author known as David Yallop wrote a book in 1984 titled In God's Name that presented a theory that stated the Pope was aware of this corruption and possibly wanted to end it. Yala presented a theory that three archbishops and three mafia members banded together to take out the Pope to ensure that their illegal dealings could continue. These specific members would have had a lot to gain if the Pope was out of the picture, which fueled the theory even further. Many more books have been written about this subject, and it would probably be easier to ignore if the Vatican Bank weren't involved in similar cases, but they are. Roberto Calvi was an Italian banker who was the chairman of Banco Ambrosiano, a bank that collapsed in 1982 after a huge political scandal revolving around money laundering and Calvi's involvement with illegal organizations. The Vatican was a shareholder in the bank and lost around a quarter billion dollars after it was shut down. In the same year that the bank collapsed, Calvi was found hanging from the Blackfriar Bridge in London. Originally, the death was ruled a suicide, but after the family contested this, it was reviewed again and was deemed to be an open verdict, meaning the death was suspicious. Calvi was actually a member of the Propaganda Du, an illegal Masonic lodge in Italy that referred to themselves as the Black Friars. Of course, with Calvi being found on the Blackfriar Bridge, many people believed that this was a warning by the organization. In 2003, the City of London Police reopened this case and investigated it as a murder. Most people now believe that there was more than meets the eye with Calvi's death, and others believe that the Vatican Bank were either responsible or involved. If this is the case, it's not completely mind-blowing to think that they would do the same with another person that didn't best suit their interests, and if the Pope did know about their corruption, then that does raise a serious question revolving around his death. Of course, for now, this is all just conspiracy and speculation, but if people keep asking questions, then we might get some answers. Exorcisms are the religious practice of removing demons or spiritual entities from another person. You will rarely see the Vatican or the Catholic Church comment on these events, but they are very real things that happen on a consistent basis. There are said to be over 300 exorcists worldwide that perform these rituals every week. Gabriel Amarth is an exorcist who's reportedly performed over 70,000 exorcisms and written multiple books on the subject. He's claimed that exorcisms are very common in the Vatican Church and that Pope John Paul II has performed multiple exorcisms himself. In one of his books, Amarth tells a story of a young woman named Sabrina who was brought before the Pope in the year 2000. Her behavior was considered strange at first, but after she met the Pope, it drastically changed and became totally bizarre. A quote from the book states, when John Paul appeared, she began to wail. Ten people had to hold her down. She wanted to fling herself at the Pope. Her face was full of hate. She was drooling, uttering blasphemies. Her body trembled. She was like a beast, ready to attack. The exorcism reportedly did not work, but she was eventually cured by a different exorcist a while later. However, Pope John Paul II has apparently performed successful exorcisms in the past. It's unclear how many of these exorcisms have been performed in the Vatican, but the number would probably shock most people. The Vatican are very reluctant to comment on these events and rarely use the word exorcism at all, but with all the information and evidence that's out there, it's hard to deny that they not only happen, but that they condone and probably fund these events. The Vatican and the Catholic Church have been accused constantly of covering up the disturbing crimes its members commit. There have been documented cases that prove that they have went out of their way to make sure the public don't find out about the atrocities that occur in the church, including the sexual abuse scandals that have occurred in Ireland, Australia, and the US, where dozens of priests have been accused and convicted of sexually harassing or abusing women. Survivors have come out to tell their stories, but have also asked the question, why is the Vatican so silent on these issues? Pope Francis has essentially remained silent on this, even though certain victims have specifically asked him for an audience. Whenever the Vatican do talk about these events, they refer to these crimes as sins and use vague language that doesn't delve into the topic at all. The Vatican have not only been silent on some of these issues, but at times, they refuse to even condemn or punish these criminals, even though some of them have been funded by the Vatican. 
a spokesperson for the Vatican, stated that when individual institutions of national churches are implicated, that does not regard the competence of the Holy See, essentially removing themselves from the conversation entirely. They have done this multiple times in the past, and it's terrifying to think that if they are willing to cover up or ignore these crimes, they're probably willing to do the same with crimes that are just as bad, if not worse. And that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. I try and make a similar video to this every week, so if you want to subscribe for that, you can. You can follow me over on Instagram or Twitter, both of which are deberk 321 And the Vatican, if you're watching this, please don't murder me. I have stuff to do next week. I would really appreciate it. But like I said, that's all for now. As always, until next time.